Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Church Online. We are so glad that you could join us today. Our prayer for you today is that you would be encouraged, equipped, and that you would leave with a desire to see heaven on earth. As we go into the announcements, please remember that the weekly newsletter that is sent out every Sunday will have all the details for all the announcements. Make sure that you have a look through that email so you can keep up to date with what's happening in Valley Church. Over to Mel. Morning, Valley family. Can you believe it? We've only got a few weeks and then we had November. And as I think you all know, November is our Thanksgiving month. And I just have such a sense that, that this Thanksgiving month, more than any we've ever had, um, is, is we really, there is so much to be thankful for. And we really need to stop, um, turn our heart and our eyes towards God, look back, see all that He has done and give Him thanks. Um, so we really just want to, um, do that this month of November and fill our airwaves, fill our conversations, fill everything we have with with the testimony of all the great things that God has done. And the beautiful thing about testimony is, is it's the prophecy of Jesus. It's it's He who has done it for you, He can do it again for for, for the next person. And so it's it's an encouragement for those around us. Um, so I really want to encourage you to think back, to to just stop and go, what has God done this year for me? In the last month, in the last six months in the last however many months of this year um, and why don't you take a few minutes and think about it and, and put it down um, recorded for us video recorded for us and send it to us it doesn't matter if it's one minute if it's five minutes or it's 15 minutes I will edit it I will work it out um, but we, we're just wanting to put together all the testimonies and then for the Wednesday devotion midweek devotions um, for the month of November we're going to put compilations of testimonies and just really give God thanks for all that he has done in the Valley family. So can I ask you to just prayerfully consider that if you need someone to film it for you, if you don't have a camera that can do that, I will be there and I will help you and I will record you if need be because we really, really want to hear your testimonies. And there's no testimony too big or too small. Um, Somebody was sharing this week about how they had just chosen to give thanks every morning um, and how that changed their perspective. What an amazing testimony that, that they encountered lockdown differently because of that. That is a testimony and that could be a minute long. And yet that's so powerful. So don't, won't you think about that and then record or call us um, and let's get these testimonies um, recorded and out there giving God all the praise and glory for what he's done. Thanks, Valley Family. Thanks, Mo. There's one date left where you can join in on a free webinar that will introduce you to the amazing First Thousand Days initiative. The global church is in a primed position to support young families through the first thousand days of their child's life. But to support the child, we need to be effective in supporting families. Valley Church wants to be a safe, nurturing space for all our members, including young families, first-time parents and little ones. We would love to see this ministry grow and develop so that we can make a meaningful impact, not only in our church, but in the community of Hout Bay. Why don't you sign up for this last chance webinar on the 3rd of November to see what it's all about. Have a look in the newsletter for more info. For all the women of Valley Church, we have a very exciting free online conference that we want to share with you. The Women of the Valley Conference will take place on the 31st of October from 10 a.m. And we would love to see all the wonderful women in our church be represented there. We encourage you to invite a few friends around and safely watch it together in small groups. This is a great opportunity to reconnect with fellow ladies in the church. Again, you can check the newsletter for more info. There are so many of you watching and there's so many things that you need to let go of whether it's pain whether it's anxiety hurt trauma so many things that have nothing to do with the light of God and you're watching you and you know that you want with all your hearts to walk into all that God has planned for you all that God has purposed you know what there is nothing that is too big for God there is nothing that is stronger than God Jesus you who sees every heart You who sees every pain, you who sees every addiction, Lord, you who sees every trauma, every past, God,
God, we thank you that as we speak the name of Jesus, that every bone will live again, that every dead bone will rise in Jesus' name. God, I thank you that we are not defined by our past. We are not defined by the words that are spoken over us. We are not defined by past relationships. We are not defined by the stigma attached to who we are. We are defined by the Most High God. So right God, I, right now, God, I pray for a release of your Holy Spirit. I pray, Father God, that you will set free, Father God, that who the Son sets free is free indeed. And as we welcome your Holy Spirit, we know, God, that where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. We declare that chains are broken. We declare that we're stepping into the light. We declare that all, all things are new in Jesus' name. As we bring the tithe to God this morning, I want to encourage you to resist the urge to slip into the same old pattern that we can so easily resort to. It's so easy for something that we do so often to lose its weight and significance. Why don't you take some time now, or during the rest of the day, just to be with God and tune into what He is saying to you today. We serve a living God who loves us and cares for us and knows what's best for us. He is always talking. It's usually us who don't listen. Use this opportunity as we bring the tithe to listen to what he is saying to you. I pray that you would be blessed as you give your tithe and that you would experience the beautiful Father heart of God today. Well, good morning, Valley Church family. On this Sunday morning, it's so good to be with you again. A uh, warm welcome to our regular members and those who regularly attend uh, Valley Church uh, both online and uh, when we were physically meeting together as well. To any visitors that we might have with us this morning, a special welcome to you. If you're joining us online, wherever you are in the world, uh, whatever situation you find yourself in, you are most welcome to join with us as we just spend some time allowing God's Word just to encourage us, to give us a foundation of hope for the, the future that lies ahead. Once again, we just praise the Lord for His goodness. We praise the Lord for His provision for us over this uh, difficult season. And uh, as we go into the month of November, which is traditionally our Thanksgiving month, uh, it's a wonderful opportunity for us to be able to look back over what has been for many a very difficult year and to be able to give thanks as well. And in the announcements or the notices, I know there was, uh, a notice about uh, testimonies uh, that we're going to be sharing during Thanksgiving month. And if you're wanting to participate in that, then I would really, really encourage you uh, to make contact with the pastoral team so that we could get your input as well. So welcome. We are really, really glad that you are able to join us this morning. Let's just turn to the Lord in prayer before I bring God's word to us this morning. So thank you, Jesus, that as we come together this morning, that you are with us. Thank you, Lord, that you have journeyed as the Good Shepherd with us over this COVID-19 season during lockdown. And Lord, even as we navigate the fearful times of moving out of lockdown and re-engaging with others and re-engaging with normal activity, we thank you, Lord, that you are with us in that as well. And so, Lord, you know each and every one who is joining us online. Lord, you know their circumstances, you know their hearts, you know where they are in their journey with you. And I just pray that you would anoint the lips of my mouth, you would empower the words that you have given me to share, and Lord, that you would use them both as a challenge and an encouragement. You would use them to set the captives free. You would use them as words of healing, of restoration, words of equipping, words of empowering, words of grace and love and mercy that will enable us to, to journey into this uncertain future, knowing that we have a hope that is secure, a hope that is based in you. So thank you for your word. May you open our hearts, may you open our minds, may you open our ears and our eyes to hear that unique message that, Lord, you have for each and every one. From this word that is the bread of life, this word that is a light unto our feet and a lamp unto our path. So come, Holy Spirit, come, Lord Jesus, 
and bless us now as we pray this in Jesus' awesome name. Amen. Dear friends, if you have your Bibles with you, or if you just want to follow online, we're going to go to Psalm 113, and we're going to read together verses 4 through to 9 this morning. The psalmist writes and he says, The Lord is exalted over all the nations. His glory above the heavens. Who is like the Lord our God? The one who sits enthroned on high, who stoops down to look on the heavens and the earth. He raises the poor from the dust and he lifts the needy from the ash heap. He seats them with princes, with the princes of his people. He settles the childless woman in her home and as a happy mother of children. Praise the Lord. Friends, we are truly in a season after lockdown and the COVID-19 pandemic in which one of our greatest needs is the need for hope. Hope for today and hope for tomorrow. And there are many sources that we would be tempted to go to to find that hope. Many will look for hope in the world around them, in their friends, their family, their possessions. Many people will look for hope in terms of national government. Many people will look for hope in their pastors and their church leaders. There are many sources that we can go to to look for hope. But I want to suggest to you on this Sunday morning that the greatest source of our hope and the greatest place that you and I can go to for the hope that we need for the future is simply to be found in the person of who God is. And when I talk about the person of who God is, I talk about who He is and what He does. The psalmist in Psalm 113 does precisely that for us this morning. He goes back to the source of His hope. He goes back to the source of his praise, that is God. And as he unpacks who God is this morning, who he is and what he does, he establishes two critical elements that go to make up the God that we love and serve. My message this morning is simply entitled, Greatness and Goodness. The source or the reason of our hope. For you see, as the psalmist unpacks the, the picture of God in Psalm 113. He speaks about the greatness of God and he speaks about the goodness of God. And then he brings those two key elements together to explain how the greatness and the goodness of God are indeed the reason each one of us have hope in spite of the circumstances we now find ourselves in, and in spite of the uncertainties that face us in the future that we are going into. So friends, join with me this morning as we just unpack some of the profound truths that the psalmist highlights for us in Psalm 130. So let's begin by looking at the greatness of God that the psalmist highlights in verses 4 and 5. This is all about who God is. The key point that he makes about the greatness of God is simply this, that there is no one, there is nothing that can compare to our God because he is indeed greater than everything. He is greater than anyone else. He is the exalted God that is above all. He is above all nations. He is even above all the heavens. His greatness is unlimited. It knows no end. In fact, there is no way of trying to measure the greatness of who our God truly is. The psalmist tells us that He is the one who sits enthroned on high, which speaks of His authority. It speaks of His power as He rules over all of His creation. There is no greater power. There is no greater authority because God is enthroned above it all. Here I'm reminded what Paul had to say after Jesus' resurrection. As he goes back to be with his great father, his great God, we read in Ephesians chapter 1 verses 20 to 23. 
It says that God raised Christ from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly realms, far above all rule and authority, power and dominion, and every name that is invoked, not only in the present age, but also in the one to come. And God placed all things under his feet and appointed him to be head over everything for the church. You see, as Jesus goes back to his great father, we have this a picture of him being enthroned with his father, far above all authority, all rule, all power, all dominion, everything had been placed under his feet. There was no one, there was nothing that was greater than what he is. The psalmist again highlights this profound, amazing truth. In Psalm 97 and verse 9. For he says of God, For you, Lord, are the most high over all the earth. You are exalted far above all gods. And again in Psalm 145 and verse 3, the psalmist says, There great is the Lord and most worthy of praise. His greatness no one can fathom. And it is in that last statement that I believe we find our hope, but we also find the struggle. Because you, you see, friends, we live with a mindset and we live in a society where in order to understand the greatness of something, we need to be able to compare it to something else. We need to be able to measure it. And, and once we do that, we can stand back and say, man, that is great. Think about that explosion that happened in Lebanon a few months ago. And it was equated to, I don't know how many thousand atomic bombs. But until we had related it to something we could measure, we had no idea of how great it is. And so our struggle with God is that we cannot measure Him. We cannot relate Him to something that we understand here on earth. Because His greatness we cannot fathom. And so, on the one hand, it is a great source of hope, of encouragement, a great source of praise. But it is also a challenge, because sometimes we forget God's greatness, because we cannot fully comprehend it. We cannot fully understand how great He truly is. The implications of the greatness of God are evident to us. Firstly, He's able to do all things and therefore He's truly the God of the impossible. He can do all things. But secondly, there is no one and there is nothing that can prevent our God from doing what He desires to do. He is truly greater than he is greater than all we will ever need of Him. Can I say that again, friend? He is greater than all we will ever need of Him. The greatness of our God is a great source of hope. Because with Him in every situation we find ourselves in, we can never find ourselves in a place that is hopeless. We can never find ourselves in a place of being overwhelmed by a sense of hopelessness because the God that we love and serve is the great God who is above all, who is in all and who is greater than all. The one who God's word said is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we can imagine because we cannot even begin to imagine God's greatness we cannot even begin to imagine what God can do in His greatness for you and for me. And so the psalmist begins by celebrating the greatness of who our God is. The first reason that we have a reason to hope. But then secondly, the psalmist moves on to the second dimension in verses 7 through to 9 when he focuses on the goodness of God. Having highlighted the greatness of God, he now begins to highlight the goodness of God, which speaks all about what God does. God's greatness is who He is. 
God's goodness is what God does. Notice what he says in those verses. He says that God raises the poor from the dust. He lifts the needy from the ash heap and he seats them with princes. He blesses the barren woman with children, giving life where there was no life before. Indeed, what God does as he does his good works, as he expresses his goodness, he comes down and he takes us from the pit and he places us in the palace with princes. Again, the psalmist understood the goodness of God so well when he wrote in Psalm 145 and verse 9, he says of God, the Lord is good to all. Friends, we have a good God. Yes, a great, powerful, awesome, almighty God but He is also a good God. The Lord is good to all. He has compassion on all that He has made. You see, growing up in the different religious traditions that we grew up in, different churches, different role models, many of us have grown up with very different pictures of who God is. Those of, up, those of us who grew up in very traditional, reformed, uh, conservative churches very often developed a picture of God as being a God who is distant, a God who is angry, a God who is to be feared, a God who is austere and awesome. And yet the psalmist comes and says of God, you are good to all. God is great. But God is good in all that He does. And so we have the greatness of God. And now the goodness of God. Some might see these as a paradox. Some might see them as being in contradiction to each other. But they're not. We will see that in a moment. But one of the key elements that we discover in this psalm. And the key verse here is verse 6 that we will get to. In order for... God to express His goodness to His creation through His greatness. He needed to come down from His distant place. He needed to step out from time and eternity. And He needed to place Himself, not just exalted above His creation, but within His creation. And so that brings me to the third point, which is greatness manifests. In goodness. Verse 6 is the key verse here. The link between God's greatness and God's goodness is found in verse 6. Notice what the psalmist tells us. That God stoops down to look on the heavens and the earth. To paraphrase that, God steps out of His exalted place. God steps out over time and eternity. And He reaches out and He comes down. To place himself amongst that which he has created. In order that in his greatness he might demonstrate to his creation his goodness. In Isaiah 57 and verse 15 God says of himself through the prophet Isaiah. For this is what the high and the exalted one says. He who lives forever whose name is holy. I live in a high and a holy place. So God is exalted. God is great. But notice what he says. But also with the one who is contrite and lowly in spirit. To revive the spirit of the lowly. And to revive the heart of the contrite. What is God saying? Yes I am exalted. Yes I am great. Yes I am almighty. I am all powerful. And that's where I dwell. But I don't just dwell there. I also come down as the good God. And I live with the one who is broken. I live with the one who is on the ash heap. I live with the one who is in the dust. I live with the one whose heart is broken. And I come and I live in order that I may revive the spirit of the lowly. That I may revive the heart of the contrite. Again, God says through the prophet Jeremiah, in Jeremiah 23 and verse 23, Am I only a God nearby? declares the Lord. 
and not a God far away. What is God saying? He's saying to His people, He's saying to His creation, Yes, I am great. I am exalted above the earth. I am enthroned above all of my creation. And therefore I have power and authority and dominion over what I have created. And you need to praise me. You need to celebrate me as this great God. But that is not just who I am. I am also a good God who is not distant, who is not exalted, but who is very near to where you are. I am with you. One of the greatest Christian intellects of our era is undoubtedly C.S. Lewis, that great professor from Oxford. He had the ability of taking profound truth about God and making it so simple. Notice what C.S. Lewis had to say about this. C.S. Lewis said, God is both further from us and nearer to us than any other being. Can I say that again? God is both further from us, exalted, and nearer to us, imminent, than any other being. That last phrase really jumped out at me, that God is nearer to us than any other being. That scripture comes to mind that says of God that He sticks closer than a friend. Have you thought about that? It's very easy for us to think of the exalted God, the one who is distant, the one who reigns on high. But sometimes it's very difficult for, to, uh, for us to understand that God is nearer to us than any other person on this earth. Your wife. Your mother, your father, your husband, your son, your daughter. Friend, take a moment and think about the person who you think is the closest to you. I want to say to you, God is closer than that person. Is that not awesome? Is that not mind-blowing? That God at the same time can be enthroned on high, ruling over all of creation, all of the galaxies, all of the planets. And yet, at the same time, be nearer to you than any other person on this earth. Someone else put it like this. God is far higher and far closer than you can imagine. God is far higher and far closer than you can imagine. And so the great God of the universe desires in his heart to show us his goodness. And so he stoops down to join man in the dust and in the ash heap. He joins the barren woman in her sorrow and her frustration and her disappointment in order to give her life in her womb. But perhaps the epitome of this distant God drawing near to man to show his goodness is to be found in God, the man named Jesus, the man who was also named Emmanuel. God with us. You see, in Jesus, we see an amazing picture of this God setting aside His greatness for a time and coming down to the dust and coming to the ash heap and coming to the broken and the barren, coming to the darkness of creation. He sets aside His greatness in order that He might bring His goodness, that the world for the first time may know that God is good. And not just great. Notice what Paul has to say of Jesus in Philippians 2 verse 7. He says of Jesus, he says of God, He made himself nothing by taking the very nature of a servant. He puts aside his greatness. Being made in human likeness and being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to death even the death on the cross. What did Jesus do? He did not hold on to His greatness, but He set it aside for a season. And He comes down to earth with one sole purpose of demonstrating the fact that God is good. And the pinnacle of that demonstration was Jesus hanging on the cross. 
the sinless dying for the sinners. The one who was without sin, paying the penalty for the sin of the world. God set aside his greatness in order that he might come and show to you and me his goodness. It's so interesting, you might see these two as being contrasting and paradox. But yet they so need each other. For you see, if God was just great, he would be distant, he would be removed, he would be controlling he would be dominant and he would have very little impact upon his creation. If he were only good and not great, his goodness would be of no effect because he would not have the ability to allow his goodness to bless his creation. You see, it is through his greatness that we experience his goodness and his blessing in our lives. And so, friends, on this Sunday morning, this brings us once again to the reason for our hope. We truly have reason to hope both for today and for tomorrow. For our hope is in a God who is greater than. He is greater than the future challenges that you and I will face, that our nation will face, that all of creation will face. He is greater than those challenges and those obstacles. He is greater than his enemy, the devil, for he has a truly already defeated him. He is greater than, and because of that, we can have hope. But we also have hope because of his goodness. His goodness toward us that is greater than anything we can ever imagine. You see, when we speak about God's greatness, we speak about the fact that He is able to do all things. And when we speak about His goodness, we speak about the fact of His willingness. He is willing to do what He will do to bless His creation. And so a great and a good God who is both able and who is both willing to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all, that we can imagine. This is the reason, friends, we have a reason to hope. And so, friends, in the light of the greatness of God, the goodness of God, and His goodness made manifest through His greatness, what is our response? We've already seen that one of the responses is a, a sense of hope for the future. But there is another response. It's very interesting how Psalm 113 begins and ends. And it begins and ends with exactly the same statement. And it is simply this, praise the Lord. And so the psalmist begins Psalm 113 saying, praise the Lord. And then he gives the reason why we should praise the Lord. By highlighting the greatness of God. By highlighting the goodness of God. And as he gets to the end of the sermon... He ends by saying, praise the Lord. Friends, on this Sunday morning, our response to this word this morning is a spirit of hope and hearts that are praising the Lord for who He is. Friends, as we go into this uncertain future, this post-lockdown, post-COVID future, God in His word again and again and again has promised His presence with us. And with His presence comes His greatness and His goodness. As you take a few moments after the sermon, just to allow God's Holy Spirit to apply this word to your heart, as you reflect where you find yourself at this morning, perhaps you identify with the one who's in the dust, or the one who's on the ash heap. Perhaps you identify with the barren woman, and there's disappointment and frustration at things that have not happened in your life. Wherever you are this morning, again I refer to what the psalmist says in Psalm 34 and verse 18. Where he says, the Lord is close to the brokenhearted and saves those who are crushed in spirit. The Lord is close. The Lord is near. 
So friends, I would encourage you, after the service, just to draw aside for a few moments by yourself. And just allow God's Holy Spirit to personalise His greatness for you. Perhaps you just need a new vision of how big our God is. You see, the problem we always make, and we always have, is that we create God in our own image. We make God far smaller than what He is, because we cannot fully understand how great He is. Just ask Father God, ask Holy Spirit, to reveal, the, to remove the scales from your eyes, and to be able to see with the eyes of your heart, how great and awesome and big and exalted and immense, immeasurable your God is. Perhaps that's what you need. But perhaps what you need on this Sunday morning, you understand God's greatness, but you don't understand His goodness. You don't understand that in a very real sense, you are the apple of His eye. God's word says that you are precious and esteemed in His sight. You don't believe that God has good in store for you. Perhaps you haven't seen it yet, but God is good, and all that He does is good, and He wants to do good for you. Perhaps you don't fully understand this morning how near God is, that He's nearer to you than any other person on this earth. Why don't you ask Holy Spirit, just to demonstrate to you and reveal to you how close God is to you this morning. And so friends, be blessed, be encouraged. We have reason to hope in South Africa. We have reason to hope in Heart Bay. Friends, you have reason to hope for your family, for your marriage, for your life. Because the God we love and serve, the God who gave His all for us, the God who came down in order to lift us up is a great God. He's a good God. And He is our God. So thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father God, for this awesome, awesome message. Thank you for a timely reminder in this season of the reason for our hope. Who you are and what you do. Great and good, exalted yet near. What an awesome God you are. We exalt you, we bless you, and we do what the psalmist tells us to do. We praise you, we bless you. Awesome for your greatness, for your goodness. We love you, Lord. We bless you. Father God, I just pray each one watching online, listening to the audio, I just pray that you would hear the cries of their hearts. You would hear their prayers. And wherever they find themselves, whether on their hash heap, whether in the dust, that your presence would be felt, your nearness would be felt in such tangible ways. You are near the brokenhearted to revive those broken hearts. And we thank you for that. Hear the prayers of your people. So Valley Church family, I close with the blessing of the season. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance before you and give you his peace. Amen and Amen. God bless.